everybody, it's Charlene. Today I'm sharing with you some of the brand new March 2024 release from Altenew, and I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful watercolor wings. Let's get started. I'm working with the paint and stamp butterflies. These are absolutely gorgeous. So you can see the stamp set there. And then in the packaging, Altenew does a great job of always including the how to do everything, how to stamp it all, as well as giving you some beautiful, colorful inspiration. New this month is also this awesome cold pressed watercolor paper. There is a pack of A2 sized cards, and then there's also a large pad, which is nine by 12. So you've got a lot of different options here. The paper's really nice and thick. It is cold pressed and it has a very nice white color. There's not too much texture, which is nice as well. I'm gonna be heat embossing. So I have some anti-static powder tool here and I'm just making sure to get my paper nice and covered with that. And then I'm gonna stamp out several of the butterflies in clear embossing ink. When you're working with watercolor paper, you do want to stamp several times with your embossing ink. And the reason is, is because watercolor paper tends to have a nice texture to it. Now that texture is great for depositing little spots of color when you're watercoloring. It's not as great for stamping or for heat embossing in particular. So you want to make sure you get a good amount of that embossing ink onto your paper. So I stamped this a total of three times before I moved on to adding my clear embossing powder. And once I had a nice and good coating of that clear embossing powder, I went ahead and brought in my heat tool and melted all of it. Now it is difficult to see, especially on camera, you are not going to see where that clear embossing powder melted. I can see it a little bit better in person, especially if I turn the light here and there. But what is important about this clear embossing powder is actually that it acts like a barrier. So wherever that clear embossing powder is, when I put my watercolor down, it is going to stay within those little wells that have been created. So the clear embossing powder, once it's melted, creates a nice little plastic barrier to the watercolor escaping. And that's gonna help us to create beautiful butterfly wings that look like they are freestyle, whereas I have a little bit of a guide here because I have that stamped image in the embossing powder. I'm starting out here with my water brush. Later, I switch to an actual paintbrush. So I think it works a little bit better with the paintbrush, but use what you're comfortable with. I have my water detailer brush and I'm just filling in the entire image with water. And then I'm picking up some of the tickled pink fresh dye ink, which is this beautiful, bright, vibrant pink color. And I'm just dotting it towards the base of the butterfly wing. And you can see I kind of pull the color out towards the edge of the wing. If my paper was a little bit more wet, I wouldn't need to do that. And you'll see later that I don't have to do it at all on the second card. Now I'm coming in with some cherry sweet, which is a real nice bright red. So I made sure that I got my pink everywhere I wanted it. And then I added the darker shade, the red and I didn't add very much of it. And you can see I am using my tool that I normally use for alcohol inks. I'm using a blower tool. Now this is a fantastic tool for blending out watercolors, especially when you're trying to get a nice dreamy blend of two colors, it works great. So I've moved on here to my next butterfly. I added a little bit more water this time and I'm starting out with my yellow, which is lemonade stand. And then I'm gonna move on to my orange. I'm gonna add the orange there towards the very base. All the colors I'm using today are from the Summer Dreams Altenew Fresh Dye Ink Set. And it has these really beautiful, vibrant, rainbow colors. This orange is Tangerine Dream, which 
I love the color orange, especially when it's really bright and vibrant like this in a rainbow, it looks really pretty. So I did one side of the butterfly wing there. Now I'm filling in the second side. I got it all wet again, and then I brought in my yellow, just dabbing towards the center of the butterfly because I want that ink to flow into the water and to stretch out across the butterfly. A couple of things to remember about watercolor. Watercolors dry different than they look wet. So sometimes you'll think I don't have enough color on there, but as it dries, that color will continue to travel through the paper across the area that you have pre-wet with your paintbrush. So you don't have to take it all the way to the edge that color is going to naturally navigate towards where you put the water for this next butterfly i'm starting with berry cool which is a really nice light teal color and you do need quite a bit of this just because in order to get that color on there and to get it nice and dark you need to add a, quite a bit um because it is in in ink blending terms, it's a very light color. It looks beautiful though paired with the green, which is the Let Us Celebrate. And again, I've got that blower tool. You can see when I blow it across there and I'm just doing it very softly. I'm not forcefully doing it. I know it looks a little forceful in the video, but that is just because this video is sped up. So that way I can show you all of the different colors of the butterflies that I am creating. So see how that green is blending beautifully and you can always go back in and add more color. So take your time, start out light, and then you can add more color to get it to where you want it to be. And you can see right there, I squeezed out just some clear water and added it to the edge. And that's just because that paper wasn't damp enough there for the color to really flow over there. And I even picked up a little bit of that berry cool and added it over there. Now for our next butterfly, I'm going to fill it in again with water. And like I said, those plastic areas where the embossing powder has melted, it creates a little well or a little barrier. So that way nothing's going to go past that. And once I have that all filled in with water, I'm coming in with easy breezy, which I, this is one of my favorite colors as well. It's just a beautiful teal color. It's darker than the one I used in the previous butterfly. And then I'm coming in with some ride the wave, which is a really gorgeous dark blue. Because it is so vibrant, I did go very light with the Ride the Wave. I did not add very much at all on this butterfly. Now, if you have never worked with your inks and treated them as a watercolor, a couple of things to keep in mind, you wanna use water-based dye inks. Those are what's gonna work for you for watercoloring. And they are not necessarily artist grade watercolors. Altenuk does carry awesome artist grade watercolors that you can use. But for me, I love to use my inks to watercolor, especially because then I can color coordinate things when I'm ink blending. I don't use any ink blending today, but you could do a beautiful scene where you color your butterflies and you put them on an ink blended background. So keep that in mind. Your fresh dye inks work lovely with some water and they create beautiful watercolor effects on your cardstock. For this last butterfly, I used Be Grateful and a little bit more of the Ride the Wave. And now I have a full rainbow of butterflies here. I'm gonna go ahead and fussy cut these out. It didn't take me too long. I just went very carefully all the way around trying to cut where the embossing powder was, but it didn't need to be perfect. These just needed to look like butterfly wings. I did leave some of the butterfly body and the reason is that I'm going to separately stamp out the bodies you'll see here in just a moment and I need somewhere to glue them onto. So leave a little bit of that if you're going to do this technique. 
First, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment and I'm stamping this in some black pigment ink just because it's watercolor paper and black pigment ink tends to work really well with watercolor paper. You do again have to stamp it a couple of times because of the texture on the watercolor paper. I believe I stamped it twice. So I did set up my butterflies where I wanted them before I stamped my sentiment. And now I'm gonna go around and pop them up with some foam tape, just putting them right back down into the places where I had previously arranged them. So you can see I have kind of a diagonal arrangement going over the top left hand side of the card. And then that is balanced by my sentiment, which is towards the bottom right. New this month, Altenew also came out with the Stamp Perfect Conditioner. Now there are three in a set and you just rub them over your stamps when they're new and it conditions your stamps so that they stamp really beautifully. I forgot that they had sent me these so I didn't use them earlier, but they are really nice. So if you struggle with conditioning your stamps at all, I definitely recommend checking these out. You just rub them lightly over your stamp and then I take my finger just to get any little excess, maybe bits of the eraser or the, the conditioner that got onto the stamp. Now again, stamping in that black pigment ink and this is gonna be on just regular cardstock. I'm not using watercolor paper because these are not going to get wet at all. You do want to use watercolor paper if you are working with watercolors or with your dye inks and water. And the reason is that regular cardstock will pill up very quickly when you are running a paintbrush over it, when you're getting it nice and wet. So definitely invest in some watercolor paper if you want to try these techniques but you can see i cut out all of the little butterfly bodies and now i'm just gluing them on and those little bodies really help to make this card come to life don't those butterflies look so cute i love them in their little rainbow array flying across the card for our second card, I'm again gonna be doing watercoloring, but I'm gonna do this a little bit different. So if you're not comfortable with fussy cutting or the concept of the clear embossing powder and trying to see that while you are painting is just outside your um, comfort zone, then I also wanted to show you that you can stamp in pigment ink and use your clear embossing powder over that in order to create those same watercolor wells that help you keep the water in the right spots. So I'm stamping these two big butterflies and I'm gonna stamp my sentiment out as well here in the black pigment ink. I did stamp it a couple of times and there you can see how pretty it looks. And then I'm coming in again with that clear embossing powder and I'm going to melt it. Now the nice thing about adding the clear embossing powder over the black is not only do you get those plastic wells that are going to keep your water in place, but you're also going to get this nice shiny look on the black. So it's a kind of a win-win. So heating with my heat gun here and I'm just going over it until the clear embossing powder starts to melt and then I am moving on to the next area. If I'm ever not sure, I just pull my heat gun away. I don't I don't wait and then overdo it. I like to kind of go a little bit and move on and if I'm not sure I just kind of pull my heat gun away. So you can see I've moved on here to a regular paintbrush, which is going to put more water down in a quicker manner, making sure I get everything nice and wet. And then I'm going to come in with some blues here on this butterfly and some teal. So I'm using Easy Breezy again, that nice dark teal color. It's so pretty. And you're going to see that that just like Boom. Do you see that how it flows out into the water and it's going to go right across the butterfly wings and kind of lighten as it gets towards the edges of the wings. So, so pretty. And then dabbing in some of that ride the wave there, and that's going to mix in with that teal. Ugh. 
just beautiful. I already love how this looks. Again, with the blower tool, just so I can get those to mix even a little bit more. And then moving on to my next butterfly, same process, making sure to get the wings really nice and wet. And for this one, I'm going to be using the Ride the Wave and the Be Grateful. So the blues and teals and purples, those are a gorgeous, cool color combination. They always look so pretty on a card. So I'm gonna dab in the purple, and you do want to use a lighter color first when you're doing this technique, because you want the lightest color to be the one that's going across the wings, whereas the dark color is gonna be the concentrated color towards the base of the wing. And you can see there, I just picked up a little bit of water and took it over on the edge there so I could get more of that light purple on the edges of the butterfly wing. And now I'm gonna bring in my Ride the Wave and just dab all along the base there in order to get it blending with the purple. I went ahead and let the panel dry completely and then I cut it down and then I got a piece of aqua colored cardstock as well as a piece of purple colored cardstock and I cut each of those a little bit larger successively so that there would be about a quarter of an inch around each piece. So you have a triple border essentially. You have an aqua border of a quarter of an inch, then a purple border of a quarter of an inch, and then you have your final white border, which is my A2 sized card base. So these cards are both A2. That means they're four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches when finished but you could adjust the sizing on this to create whatever size of card you would like. I'm using some foam tape in order to pop this up on my card base just to give the card a little bit more dimension and kind of oomph because I'm not going to be using much in the way of embellishments. I could leave this as is, but I did want to come in with a few enamel dots. We've got some new enamel dots here from All to New this month. You can see over in the top left hand corner in just a moment here, there are some some clear dots. I didn't end up actually using those on either of these cards, but they are really fun. They're crystal clear. I just use these beautiful teal color enamel dots and I use the small ones. So here is the finished card. Isn't that beautiful? And then I'm going to show you again the first card that we created. So two totally different looks here. I did want to mention this video is part of the March 2024 release video hop for Altenew. So be sure to check down in the description for all the details and your chance at a fun giveaway. I hope you all picked up some tips and tricks today and enjoyed today's video. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.